Hi, my name is Sam Nikesh. I am a graduate PhD student at MIT. I've been doing experimental research in nanotechnology for my graduate work. Though outside of that, I'm a home brewer. I love beer, I love working in the kitchen, and I'm a geek. I grew up in Kentucky, born and raised, and went to the University of Kentucky for undergraduate. I got started in research as a freshman, all that led me to graduate school. I like working on my hands in an environment where I can test out different things, and in the end, you've got something to show for it. But that kind of paired in really well with brewing, actually. I realized that food can be made over a period of time, and that's how I found fermentation. You can pair in a number of these different ingredients, bring in some bacteria, and you end up uh, with a nice beer like you got here. There's a lot of play you can have in your opinion. Figure out what the flavors are that you like and say, wow, can I replicate that? And it really is artistic, you know? I, can, I found my mind wandering. It's like, well, what happens when I do this? What happens when I do that? It comes down to, like, my creative pursuit is in the kitchen. Um, in the end, there's a lot of complexity to it. You know, it may not be visual complexity, some of it is, but there's this olfactory complexity that is replicated in all kinds of art that you see around the world. There is still a process to it. This is, this is one of the things that I get from the labs. You also have to follow the procedure, but you play within the boundaries, and that's the science to it. You start off with water, and what you're going to do is make sort of a, a malt tea or a barley tea. But sometimes you hear people talking about beer being bread water. Well, it's, it's grains that you start off with. You're going to make a tea from that. You have to, so you have to heat up the water and, and use the grains to pull out some of the flavor of the grains. Also with that flavor, you can pull out color, but very importantly, you can pull out sugars. These sugars are what give you the alcohol. And that's the chemical magic that's happening. Um, so you're going to be pulling those out with the grains and the water together. And you're going to create what's called a wort, which is a very flavorful, colorful, smelling sugar solution. And that wort is uh, pretty important to the process because that's the foundation from which you're going to be getting the beer. Once you get your wort, the sugar AT, you're going to actually do what's called a uh, hopping. And that's the procedure where you're going to change the flavor profile a little bit of, of the original tea, which you're also going to throw in hops. And so these hops um, historically was a preservation agent, but also a flavoring and aromatic agent. You create a larger population. They're doing both one, taking sugar and making alcohol. And two, they're also changing and adding flavors to the beer. So at a room temperature, or at least in our case, when we make ales at room temperature, the yeast is going to populate and do its thing. Um, and after a number of days, you're going to have pretty much beer that's ready to go. The only difference is it's in a big pot or a fermentation vessel. You need to put it in a bottle. So as a home brewer, what you typically do is you'll give it a little bit more sugar, because most of the sugar has been converted to alcohol at that point, and you put it in bottles. That's called conditioning. And that part right there is mainly to get a little bit more flavor out of it and uh, create the carbonation that everyone likes to, to feel when they drink the beer. Um, and so you let it condition over a period of time, cool it down, ready to go. Bottoms up. Home brewing is a very group based activity. You know, there's a lot that goes into it, there's a lot of ideas that people have, you can bounce it off. Same thing goes like in a research environment where I'm always asking questions of other people and getting feedback. I think my idea of being a geek is find things that get you going. Don't be afraid of pursuing more. Always be open to different perspectives and different ideas. The best part of being a geek is always being curious.